we're going to protect Christianity. And I can say that. I don't have to be politically correct or we're going to protect it. You know? And I, I asked Jerry and I asked some of the folks because I hear this is a major theme right here, but 2 Corinthians, right? 2 Corinthians 317, that's the whole ball game. Donald Trump is just like any other politician when it comes to seeking votes. He'll say he loves everyone every time and will immediately change the subject when his caustic comments about women, Muslims, Mexicans, and the physically challenged are brought up. And he also tries to be everything to everyone, as witnessed this week at Liberty University, when a man who claims to have a close relationship with God seemed to be clueless about the origination of a biblical verse. This all points to the all-important evangelical vote. A number of those going to the polls expected to climb this November as religious leaders are urging their believers to get out and be counted this time around, unlike what many see as a failure to be heard four years ago. Let's welcome President and General Counsel for the Florida Family Policy Council, who says evangelicals should see through the Trump game, John Stenberger, joined by campaign strategist and Christian supporter of Donald Trump, Salvatore Lamastra. Gentlemen, I want to thank you both for joining us. And John, let me begin with you. Here's an article from The Atlantic on September 3rd, 2015, written by Jonathan Merritt. The lead paragraph. Donald Trump is immodest, arrogant, foul-mouthed, money-obsessed, thrice-married, and until recently pro-choice. By conventional standards, evangelical Christians should despise him, yet somehow the Manhattan billionaire has attracted their support. John, we're told that evangelicals like Donald Trump. Why? Well, it's true, and it's sad. A recent uh, study that was just done in Massachusetts statewide by a polling agency showed that people that like him uh, have authoritarian tendencies and or are afraid of terrorism. And so that's interesting because a lot of Christians are very comfortable with a preacher or an authority figure, which they don't question. They just listen to and believe. They don't second guess what the pastor says, what the priest says. And so the problem with Donald Trump is just like Barack Obama. He sounded good. We fell in love with the romantic idea of the first black American president. So the idea of Barack Obama was much better than what we actually got. And so I'd submit to you the same thing as with Trump. The best predictor of who a candidate's going to be is his past behavior, his record, his statements. And his statements are deplorable uh, in terms of the kind of issues that Christians are concerned about. Favors Planned Parenthood, the good stuff of Planned Parenthood, in favor of gay marriage, uses the F word openly and other four-lettered obscene words, not just cursing, but obs obscenities that the FCC would have to bleep out. I mean, this is, this is a man who's very undisciplined it with his tongue, okay. and it's going to be a disaster. So let me get to this. Salvatore, here's something else from the New York Times, and this is just recently, talking about a supporter of Donald Trump who says, belief that Mr. Trump is a Christian man and that was good enough. Is that good enough to just know that and to believe that? And what do you base that on? I think that's uh, what we're called on as Christians. We just take someone at their word, and I, I believe Donald Trump, and I think most Americans do. I mean, as you mentioned in the CBS New York Times recent polling, uh, Donald Trump wins 42% of evangelicals compared to Ted Cruz, who only wins about 25% of them. So I think a lot of people are tired of politicians as usual, and I think, um, you know, Donald Trump does say a lot of things that might not be what normal political candidates would say. He might use a little bit of profanity here and there, and he might have had past associations, like you said, with supporting Planned Parenthood and other things that would be uh, counterintuitive to the Christian culture. But Donald Trump is expressing those openly instead of hiding behind closed doors like Ted Cruz and some other candidates are. I got to be honest with you here, Salvatore. I have friends of mine who are evangelicals, and they are concerned that Donald Trump talks about the Bible, yet he cannot quote one verse from the Bible. And he also speaks in generalities about it as if he never read the book. Does that bother you at all? That's how he speaks on everything, I think. I mean, you look at him in the debates and stuff, he's not going to get into the nitty-gritty details. He's looking for sound bites. He, he knows what to do on air to attract um, viewers and to attract, in this time, supporters and voters for him. So I think he's doing the right thing and not getting into specifics. So, John, let's just come out and say that those people who believe in Donald Trump see him as that authoritarian figure, that person who, like a pastor, can move them forward and still has their best interests at heart. What's wrong with that? So, yeah, when I hear him, I like what he's saying, but you have to reconcile that with a lifetime of statements in history. This is a man that's been married three times, a man that has owned, not only owns casinos, you talk about what's his position on the casino gambling, he owns casinos, builds them, has, has put in the first strip clubs and all-male review in some of his casinos that have ever been in any casino. But everybody makes mistakes, John. That's what the Christian will say. Everybody oh, makes mistakes and needs to be forgiven. These are not mistakes. These are things he's openly proud of. 
would give us the first first lady who's posed openly nude multiple times. I mean, this is just really a highly questionable situation. And we have to, look, I'm, I'm saying, look, if you want to vote for him as a Christian, just know about his background, know what he said, know what he believes, because he's all over the board on issues. And I think he's going to be an enormous disappointment on day one when he can't both say he has to take a position on something. Right now he's saying, oh, yes, I hate abortion, but I'm pro-choice. And he goes back and forth. He contradicts himself in one sentence often. Okay, and you get to then let me get to this then with Salvatore. I've only got about a minute left. Salvatore, I'll tell you what, John's talking about a lot of morality issues here with evangelicals are very big on. Don't those morality issues bother you at all? They, they don't bother me because I, I've listened to the same interviews and I've heard Trump, you know, explain his past and explain how he's changed his opinions on a lot of those issues. And I trust him. And I do think that a morality within a president um, is important. But I do think um, just going back to evangelicals as a whole supporting Donald Trump, I mean, this election is not going to be about those social moral issues. We're not going to be, be talking though? Shouldn't, shouldn't morality have a play in who you elect as president? I think I, I do think it it should uh, to to a point. Um, you know, we're electing someone to lead this country um, in a very tough time when it comes to terrorism, when it comes to the economy not doing well. And I think those are what people are putting um, as their priority, not so much the moral issue of. So, Donald John, Trump. I've only got ten seconds left. In your opinion, John, should a good Christian vote for Donald Trump? Absolutely not. I mean, with as many other good candidates that have conservative uh, moral principles, both personally and in their policy. There's no reason why anybody should turn to Trump. We and you would say they should, correct, Salvatore? Counts. Yep, I think they absolutely should. I think he's the best guy to take us forward. We are going to revisit this as we get closer to November. Salvatore LaMastra, John Stenberger, I want to thank you gentlemen for joining us. It will become an issue heading towards that election day. Stay with us. The fastest 60 minutes of news. The Hardline continues.